Welcome. This is Amazing Grace Ministry, a ministry of Grace and Truth Baptist Church, Goa, India. You're about to watch Pastor Lots and Rock preaching from Grace and Truth Baptist Pulpit. Wonderful music this morning. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Amen. 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 Good to hear the testimonies of the Lord has been doing great things in the lives. Nice to see some good results and uh, good to see how God is miraculously providing and blessing His children. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. When your tooth aches. God is good. When your head aches. God is good. But you cannot come to church. Huh? That's good. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. If you are having this BIMS Bible, then it's in page number 1221. When you, are, when you read this chapter, I will, I will try to read this chapter to you until verse number 1, yeah, until verse number 5, so you can get uh, what exactly Apostle Paul is talking. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill in my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done to strife or win glory, but in loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Can you repeat after me and say, let each esteem other Better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse number five, would you please read together with me? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I mean, this book is not, this epistle is not written to an unbelievers because they don't have the mind of Christ. This epistle is written to you and to me and to the Philippians who were, who were Christians in the Philippian church. And it was written to Christians saying, Christians, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Why would a Apostle Paul write to Christians that the mind of Christ should be also in them? Because there are Christians who do not have the mind of Christ in them. You may have the, you may have the seal of Jesus Christ that you are saved, but you may not be, have the mind of Christ. Which means you may be a Christ follower, are the child of Jesus Christ, a child of God, but you may not be the follower of the Word of God completely. You may just follow, yeah, I believe the Gospel, I believe the Bible, I believe everything what the Bible says. You may be a believer of the Bible and not a follower of the Bible. You get me what I say? There's a lot of difference between a believer of the Bible and a follower of the Bible, of the Bible. It's as good as saying, I am a Bible. 
Bible following, believing Christian. Amen? Amen. Because it's one thing to say, I'm a Bible believing Christian. And it's another thing to say, I'm a Bible believing and following Christian. Because you can be a believer and not a follower. But a follower is a believer. Amen? Amen. A man follows the Bible because he believes the Bible. But a man who believes the Bible may not be a follower of the Bible. The problem here with the Philippian Christian is not that they were bad, but they were just like you and me as bad as possible. Which, mean, which means, I mean to say, in every church there is problem. Yes or no? You won't find a good church, and if you find one, you let me know. You won't find a perfect church in the face of this earth. God is still perfecting you progressively. You are perfect positionally, but progressively, daily, He is sanctifying you. Amen? Amen. You won't find a perfect church. The Philippian church had problems and that's why they are told, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. They read the book of Corinthians, man, all kind of sin that can be addressed is found there. It's shameful. You know why? Carnal Christians. Not a good word to use carnal Christians. It should not be associated with Christians as carnal. But sadly, carnal word means flesh. And a lot of Christians today dwelling and sinking and swimming with fleshly fashions and fleshly thoughts. And that's what is now controlling the mind of Christian and not Christ. Let this mind which was in Christ be in human. Let you and I be as Christ is. Let us talk like Jesus Christ. Let us walk like Jesus Christ. Let us think like Jesus Christ. Let us speak like Jesus Christ. If I would ask you a question, I don't want your hands up. If I would ask you a question, how many of you today, this morning, here can say, Sincerely, brother, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. How many of you can say? And if I would ask you to raise your hand, I know not a single person over here can say, I have the mind of Christ. But that's the sad news. The truth is, the, what the truth is, God expects you and I as a Christian ought to have the mind of Christ. <laughs> But we fail in many ways. <clears throat> Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Everybody look, look at me. Everybody look at me. I'm going to speak today to you, each individual. Just as I talk to you, I'm talking to me. You know why? Because this message is more important for me as much as it is necessary for you. Amen? Amen. So I don't want you sitting with you. I don't want you to sit here with something in the back of your head. Oh, you're talking about me. Yes, the truth is I'm talking about you and I'm talking about me. And I'm here so God can use the preaching of God's word so it may be beneficial for you and for me that we can be fashioned and shaped and purified and made as the mind of Christ is. And all God's people say, Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, this morning, O oh God, we come before thy presence to ask you to bless this message. Thank you for the inspired word that you've given us in thy holy book. We thank you for giving us, preserving your inspiration to us. Speak to us today, O oh God, in a very powerful way. And as I preach to your children, O oh God, speak to me and break me and make me like you. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit, O oh Master. Oh God, without thy Spirit, I am like an handicap. Without thy Spirit controlling me, I am just an handicap, O oh God. Control me this morning. Fill me with thy words. Give me the words of utterance and fill me with thy spirit, O Master. Give your children a receptive heart and an alert mind. Let them be concentrated in what is being preached today. And 
may they have the mind of Christ and may I have the mind of Christ. We come before you pleading that you will do something great today in our lives. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 verse number 5. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many of you think that you need this message this morning? Amen. Amen. We all need this message. Praise the Lord for that. I like to title this message this morning as the beauty of having the mind of Christ. The beauty of having the mind of Christ. But the first thing you need to understand before you have the mind of Christ. Now it's not that you are deprived of the mind of Christ. The truth is you don't allow God to control your mind. When Christ is not the one who controls your mind, then you do not have the mind of Christ. But if Christ is the one who is controlling your mind, or the Spirit of God is controlling your mind, then you have the mind of Christ. The problem is we linger and we, we loiter and we roam around and we swim and we dip ourselves and we drown ourselves into all these negative things and gossip things and evil things of the world and people in the world and we are so much concentrated in all the things of wickedness and, and negative and impurity and, and the things that are of false report we are we are sinking in it every day of our life. And so we do not allow the Lord Jesus Christ to control our mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, means like Jesus you also be. Behave yourself as Jesus Christ was living. Live a life as Jesus life, Jesus Christ lived on this planet. Speak as Jesus spoke. Hear as Jesus heard. Do things as Jesus did. In one sentence the Bible says, Be holy as God is holy. Amen. Brother, do you think it's possible to live a hundred percent pure life on this planet earth? I don't know. But the Bible says, be holy as God is holy. You may not be 100 person, but yes, through Jesus Christ, I can do all things. Amen. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Through Jesus Christ, we can do all things. I mean, brother, you think we can live 100 person pure? I think so we can live. That's why the Bible says, be holy as God is holy. I think so. It's not speaking about sinless perfect life. It's speaking about spirit control life. Amen? Amen? I'm not speaking about sinless perfection. I'm speaking about spirit controlling yours and my mind. Yours and my life. Yours and my heart. Yours and my thoughts and looks and desires and words and erection. The Holy Ghost controlling our life. <coughs> this mind be in me, which was also Christ Jesus. Let us behave like Jesus Christ. Let us live like Jesus Christ. Let us talk like Jesus Christ. Let us behave like Jesus Christ. <laughs> but you cannot be controlled. Your mind cannot be like Jesus Christ until and unless you come to Jesus Christ with a repentant heart confessing your sins of dwelling in wickedness and with wicked thoughts and evil thoughts and gossip thoughts and, and, and false reports and all this evil God cannot control you and me and make you and me like the 
my, and have a mind of Christ which was in Christ, you and I cannot have if we are going to be in where we are. You cannot put new wine together with the old wine. Amen. I mean, you cannot have a pastry that is sweet when a bit of medicine is inside your mouth. Can you? You won't get the true taste. You want to wash your mouth. You want to rinse your mouth, clean it up, and then enjoy the pastries and the ice creams and get the pleasure of the taste. Amen. Amen. You cannot be controlled and you cannot have the mind of Christ when you are dwelling and enjoying and leading towards the mind of the devil. So you and I should resist the mind of the devil. Amen. Amen. Hey Christians, it's not that you're running after it. It's just that Satan is running after you. And instead of resisting him, you are allowing him to hug you around. Am I right? Yeah. Even if you say no, I'm still right. Amen. <coughs> resist the mind of the devil. When evil things come, resist it. When, when gossip comes, resist it. And stop it. You and I will have a bad growth spiritually if you do not resist the devil. The choice is yours whether you want to be discouraged or disappointed or you want to be revived and say, I, I renounce all the same and I'm not going to allow anything to control my mind and take the joy of the Lord away from me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. 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 The joy of the Lord is my strength. And if the joy is gone out of you, the joy of the Lord, you have no strength, my friend. You have no strength to resist the devil. You have no strength to destroy the works of the devil. You have no joy. We will be sad. We will be disappointed. We will be disappointed. We will have a bad day every day. The choice is yours. But this is not an option for you to have the mind of Christ. This is a commandment that you as a Christian should have the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Let this mind. It's not saying, hey, let this mind be in you. No. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense to you now? It's a commandment. It's mandatory for you and I as a Christian to have the mind. But, but what about those Christians, brother? They say they are Christian, but they don't. No, you don't have to worry about them. You worry about your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. When you linger and think about and worry, worry about the others who live like the devil, you are easily being drawn towards their thought and you will be very soon like them. Are you getting me? God wants you to follow Him and not follow them. God wants you to follow Christ Jesus and not me. Amen? God doesn't want you to follow the brother sitting next to you or the sister sitting next to you. He wants you to be the follower of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If you wish to be my disciples, Take up your cross daily and follow me. Daily. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ means being a consistent follower of Jesus Christ. Being a consistent follower of Jesus Christ means the one who will take up his cross and follow Christ daily, no matter what the world says, no matter what the world pulls, we are consistently walking and following towards Christ, resisting and renouncing the works of darkness and the speech of the world and the thoughts of wickedness and shaking your clothes off and moving ahead with the blood of Jesus on you. Any man over here in this room this morning? Amen? Amen. Amen. Some people are really doubtful. You've got to make sure of yourself. Resist the mind of the devil. 
For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Are you walking after the spirit? Or walking after the flesh? For they that are after the flesh. No, no, no. Next time. You know what? You're not to anything comes. The flesh of things come in. You like to dwell in it. You like to talk about it. You like to listen about it. You like to gossip about it. You know what? I'm telling you. Try to understand. This is my problem too sometimes. And this is your problem too. You know what you need to do? You are in flesh. Confess your sin that moment. And get right with God. And walk in the spirit. Amen. If you're in flesh, you will not be controlled by spirit, my beloved. No way! But they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. What are the things of the spirit? We will see it in a minute as we come down. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you must resist the carnal mind, the carnal thought, and the fleshly thought, and the worldly thoughts. If you want the mind of Christ to dwell in you. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You understand that? The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal mind. You know what carnal? You get the word carnival. Carnivorous. Flesh. Fleshly thoughts. <clears throat> Wicked thoughts. Unnecessary thoughts. The thoughts and the words and the and the messages that does not encourage you spiritually. How many of you can say, brother, by gossiping I grew in the Lord? How many of you can say this morning? By gossiping all the wicked things, I grew closer to the Lord. Anybody here? No! And not even I! How many of you can say, when I resisted the devil, I came closer to the Lord Jesus Christ? Anybody here? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's true. And you know it. And I know it. Because the Bible says it. Because a carnal mind is enmity against God. You are a carnal guy, you're a carnal lady, you're still in enmity with God. You have the choice to resist it. But when you get it, it's because you made a choice to get it. And because you loved it, and you want it, and you got it. But if you did not want it, you could have resisted it and stopped it and have a peace of mind. Amen? Amen. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Ephesians 4 7 it says, These I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. I gave you actually Romans 8, 5 and Romans 8, 6, Romans 8, 7 as I read without mentioning. You can take it down. And just now I read Ephesians chapter 4, 17. These I say therefore the testify and testify in the Lord that ye hence would walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. It's a vanity. You know what? When you allow allow the devil's mind to be in you, you are an enemy of God. A born again enemy of God. Sadly, God used that word today because that's what it comes around when we see the scripture. Because the Bible says a my, a my, uh, uh, the Bible says because the carnal mind is an enemy against God. And if you have the carnal mind, then you become an enemy God, even though you are a Christian, you born again, you profess salvation in Christ Jesus through faith. Hey, look at me. As we go out of this room, before we go out of this room, and as you listen to this message, my plea to you and my prayer to God this morning is 
that you and I have a desire and a prayer in our heart. Lord, help me to be like Jesus Christ. Lord, help me to have the mind of Christ in me. Help me not to think evil of the preacher who is preaching such a hard message this morning, but to think right about God and have the mind of Christ in me. Amen. Amen. If you're going to sit there and think evil about me, you're going to profit nothing this morning. Amen. Amen. You will go out just as you came in. We don't come to church just to sing and hear the message. We come to church so that we become more closer to Christ. Amen. That we become charged up. And that we become more pure. And that we are filled in the spirit. And we get wisdom and knowledge. And that we can go and face the world. Amen. You can worship Christ at home, beloveds. I tell you, you can worship Christ anywhere you want. But God expects that we come together for the encouragement of one another and for the charging up of ourselves and for the increasing of our faith by hearing the word of God and to become a testimony to the world. So the world will look at you and say, why are those crazy people getting together? Because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All that group of people, they are Christians. If you will be sheltered inside your house and not come as one family, nobody in this village will ever know there is a church here that gathers for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And Christ wants everybody to know this is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We come to be filled with the Spirit, to increase our faith by hearing the Word of God. We come for the testimony of Jesus Christ. We come for the encouragements of one another. And that is not a choice, but that is a commandment of the Bible. Amen? But why do you come to church, brother? My grandmother came from Bombay. So where did you go? No, we went for the mall. Why not come with your grandmother to the church when you can go to the mall with your grandmother? Amen? Somebody came in our house so we could not come. So where did you go? We went to the shopping center. Why not the church? Why a bad testimony? Resist the mind of the devil. Don't be carnal minded. Don't be carnal minded. Grow in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. The, the devil will always try to stop you, hinder you, and put all wicked thoughts and negative thoughts in your mind. Jesus says, let this mind of Christ be in you. Will you come to me? Will you allow me to do something in your life? Will you allow me to break you and cleanse you and wash you? Will you allow me to sanctify you? That's what Jesus is asking. What is your answer this morning? What is your answer this morning? Resist the mind of the devil. And then once you resist the mind of the devil and say, No! I don't want to hear that. I don't want to speak that. I don't want to see that. Because that destroys my spiritual life. I turn away. Repentance. Turn away. And come to Jesus Christ and have the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Renew your mind. Once you resist, renew your mind immediately. Now, renewing your mind is not a not God is not saying, hey, hey, please, 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 man. Please, man, please, I'm begging you. No, it's a commandment. I beseech you. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Hey, let me let me tell you one thing, beloved Christians. You know, if you and I take the whole Bible as the commandment of God, we will do well in walking with Christ. Amen? Amen. And not as an option for us. If you know, no, it's written in the Bible, it's God's command and I'm going to do it. Then you will walk well with Christ. You will do well in your life. But if you're going to say, well, that's my option, man. I can do what I want to do. And God gave me a choice to make over here. You, when you do that, you only make false choice 
and lose choice. But when the Bible, when you, when you read the Bible and say, God said it, so I'm going to take it as commandment, you will do well for the growth of your spiritual life. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Brother, I'm in spirit. Don't worry about me. I'm in spirit with you. Who cares about your spirit with me? Who cares about that? Because I cannot see your spirit. Amen? Amen. I can only see you by your flesh, by your bodies. <laughs> God can see your spirit. I cannot. You cannot see my spirit, but you can see my body. Amen? Amen. I beseech you. And so Paul, Apostle Paul is saying, in, inspired by the Holy Ghost, he says, this is what you and I should do. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Amen? Amen. Now, would you just say, present your bodies? Present your Not just your words, present your bodies. Present. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Did I make some of you mad already? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You already started thinking that oh, he's hinting at me. No, I'm talking about you, my brothers and sisters. I'm talking about each one of you here. <coughs> I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. If your body is not here, you are a dead sacrifice. The rotten, stinking, dead Christians. You can say amen to that now. Amen? Amen. amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You know what? We are talking about the mind of Christ. When your mind is right in association with Christ and, and in in affiliation with the mind of Christ, then your body will be right also. Amen. Amen. It's not your mind is of Christ and your eyes will be of the devil. If you have the mind of Christ, your eyes also will be like. If you have the mind of Christ, your words will be like Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Do I make sense this morning to you? Yes. Amen. And then our walks will be like Jesus Christ. That is why you and I have been called to present yours and my bodies. You understand what bodies means? Yours, nose, tongue, mouth, teeth, eyes, ears, ears, <coughs> head, hands, fingers, nails, legs, foot, everything. Bodies. As what? A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You don't do that, you have not done a service to the Lord. You have no right this morning to get angry with me. You have no right to say, brother is hitting at me. I did not say anything today, but I read to you Romans chapter 12 verse 1. You dare get angry with God. Amen? Amen? And he'll slap you right and left. Verse number two. And be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed. Transformed. Everybody say transformed. Transform. You understand what is transforming? Not, not being inside that gutter, but coming out of it, washing yourself and being clean. Amen? Hey, you know what? Christ saved you from the gutter to the uttermost. From the, from the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen? Amen? Before salvation, you were living inside the gutter. And so Christ saved you from the guttermost to the uttermost. Once and for all. Shed His precious blood on you and made you whiter than snow.
Amen. Amen. He wants you to be like how you were when he saved you first. He still say by the grace of God, like a little baby. Pure thoughts, pure words, pure desire, fire for Christ. And be not confirmed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Once your mind is renewed, your looks will be renewed, your words will be renewed, your works will be renewed, your dress up will be renewed, everything will be renewed if your mind is renewed. If your mind is not renewed, everything is bad. Everything will be bad. That's why you are called to renew your mind. Now, renewing of your mind is your choice. Presenting your body is a commandment. Renewing your mind is your choice. You want to live in the gutter or you want to walk with Christ? And so the Bible says, be not uh, conformed to this world. Don't listen to the worldly music. Don't walk like a worldly man. Don't talk like a worldly woman. Don't dress up like a worldly person. Don't do this like a worldly person, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. That's the will of God. You want to say what is God's will? I don't know. Do this. I want to find out what God's will. Do this. This is the perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. You don't need God's uh, permissive will. But God is permitting me today. Don't do that. Don't link, don't go for God's promise will. You'll fall in trouble. Go for God's perfect will. You know how you will know God's perfect will? By obeying Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. You want to find God's perfect will for your life? Obey now, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. You want to find God's perfect woman for your life? Obey God in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. You want to find God's perfect decision for your life? Obey Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Do that and you will have God's perfect will in your life. Amen. Amen. Obeying God's perfect will will enable you to be in the perfect will of God and find the perfect will of God and know the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. So resist the mind of the devil and renew your mind. Immediately, we have a couple of minutes, but finishing soon, have the mind of Christ. Once you resist, then renew it. Present to Jesus Christ your life, your bodies, your thoughts, your desires and say no, no to the devil. And yes to Jesus Christ. No to the thoughts of the world. And yes to the Bible. No to gossip. And yes to gossiping about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Why not gossip about Jesus Christ someday? Why not talk about gossiping the worldly thing? And why not brag about Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. I tell you what. When you renew your mind. When you come to Jesus Christ and present yourself in the as a living sacrifice. This is what you will know. The moment you renew your mind, you will recognize the holiness of Christ. Amen. The moment you recognize the holiness of Christ, you will recognize your how weak you are when you recognize the holiness of Christ. You will know how weak you are and how, how whatever you can put the lowest thing for yourself and you'll realize how much you need to hold on to Christ. Amen. 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 That's when you renew your mind. You see the Holy Spirit. That's what happened to Isaiah. I saw the Lord seated on the throne and surrounding him with the seraphims. And they had six wings. With twine they covered their feet. With twine they covered their face. And with twine did they fly. Saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. Lord God Almighty. Who was, who is, and who will be. Amen. 
the moment you see the glory of Christ working in your life, in the moment you realize the holiness of Christ, you stop thinking about yourself and talk about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's true. You will realize you are nothing. What you do is nothing. But God alone is everything. And your mind and your words will be filled with Him and Him alone. Amen. Amen. That's the mind of Christ. Have the mind of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11. The Bible says, Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. You see, Christians, you can be perfect every day if you walk a circumcised life. Surrendering yourself to Jesus Christ every morning you get up, keep, put yourself on the altar of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 11. Finally, brethren, be perfect, be of a good comfort, be of one mind, not double mind. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't be a double minded Christian, be of one mind. Jesus said, One mind. Just one mind. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Can you tolerate your brother today? Can you tolerate your sister today? Can you tolerate each one? Can you tolerate their stupidity? Can you tolerate their weaknesses? Can you tolerate their stumblings? Can you tolerate? You should. You should. You should. You should learn to get along. That's Christian life. You should. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 27 Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit. Do we all have one spirit or are we divided this morning over here? Sometimes God will put some people in your life where you feel, oh, I cannot tolerate that person. Sometimes God will put such people in your life to make you like Jesus Christ. Amen? That is true. That is true. Unless you are broken, you will not become like Christ. Unless your seed falls down and dies, it will not come up and bear fruit. You understand? Do you know why the rocks that facing the waves of the sea is polished and smooth? It's everyday hard heating of the waves. Hard heating of the waves. And it is soft and it is smooth. That lady, when she entered into the room where <laughs> Jesus was with the apostles, and she wanted to anoint the feet of the feet of Christ, you know what happened? She had to break the bottle for the aroma to come into the house. Amen? Amen? Unless you are broken, the aroma will not come out, my beloveds. Allow God to break you and then fill you and make you the one that Christ wants you to make you. When God puts some people in your life that you feel that you cannot tolerate, Remember that God is working in you and trying to take away the roughness of your life. Amen. When you learn to tolerate, then you will be like Christ. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Take my advice today. You will live longer peacefully. Amen. Let only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you, or else be absent. I mean, hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind. 
striving together for the faith of the gospel. Amen. Amen. How many of you think that I'm talking to you today? Anybody here? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Let him have the best seat. Let this sister have the best seat. Let that brother do these things. I will give him the opportunity. And I will also do it. I will talk good about that brother. I will talk good about that sister. I'll stop gossiping. I'll stop backbiting. I'll stop saying bad things about him. I'll stop saying bad things about her. And I'm now going to have my conversation. The Bible says what? Let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to be an encouragement to the sister. I'm going to be an encouragement to this brother. How many of you think we all need encouragements every day? Amen? Amen. We all need. We all need. We don't need not a kick on your butt. Amen. Amen. Will you be a Barnabas today? Say, I'm going to encourage you. And lift him up. And lift her up with some good words and kind words and good words. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy. Oh, 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 oh. Then, uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, you know what God is saying? Hey, dress up yourself with what? Dress up yourself with what? With holiness. Holy and beloved. Bubbles of mercy. Are you compassionate as Christ is? Are you merciful as Christ is? Mercy. Kindness. Kindness. Humbleness of mine. Oh, they are better than yours. She is better than me. I want to be like Jesus Christ. The moment you esteem others better than you, that is the way to rise up, beloveds. Amen? Amen. Because if you think you are way up here, you will never rise up because that's where you are already. But if you esteem others better than you, which means you think you are one step below, that means you have another step to rise up. Amen? Amen. Then you can rise up. And God says, give me your hand, buddy. I'll pick you up. That's why God says, esteeming others better than you. Humbleness of mind, weakness, long suffering. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, But God has not given us the spirit of fear and of love, uh, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Christ has one mind, lowliness of mind, humbleness of mind, sound mind. That's what he had. That's what he wants you to have. First Peter chapter 1 verse 30 says, Wherefore, gird up your lines of your mind. Mind is the battlefield. If your mind is right, even your fit will be right. Amen? Amen? If your mind is right, your words will be right. If your mind is right, your looks will be right. If your mind is right, your thoughts will be right. If your mind is right, your everything will be right. If your mind is spoiled, all is spoiled. Curl up your mind, the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is brought, that is to be brought unto you. The revelation of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Finally. Finally. Be all. Say all. all. Not just somebody here. Uh, but be all. It looks good to see the whole room filled today. Doesn't it? It's good to put some extra chairs when everybody comes. And, and see the room packed up. Isn't it? Yes. You know what dear friend. When you see that room you are a discouraged man to the people in the church sorry but that's the truth when you sit at home and you can make it to church 
you are a discouragement to the church members. You come to church together. You see the room filled. We see all the worshipers together and see all the saints together lifting up their voice and singing praises to God and listening to God's word and saying amen and we got to put some extra chairs. You know what happens? You're an encouragement to your brothers and sisters. You can say amen. 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 That is true. That is true. Do you want to be an encouragement? Finally, be all of one mind. One mind together. Everybody has the same mind, believing one book, believing the same doctrine, and, and, and agreeing with the word of God, and going out and witnessing and inviting the people to church and doing great things for God. You know why? Because you have the mind of Christ. Hey, listen to me. A man with a mind of Christ is a disciple and a soul winner. Amen? Because Christ says, go into all the world and make disciples and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, go and bring them. The Bible says, go and invite them in the hedges and the highways and invite them and bring them into the house of the Lord so that my house may be full. Do you agree with Jesus? He says, go out and bring so my house will be full. Go in the hedges and highways and tell everybody what Jesus did in your life and bring them to Jesus. You know when you do that? When your mind is of Christ. I don't want to do that. You don't have mind of Christ. I don't think I can. You don't have mind of Christ. You can do. You can do what the Bible says. If you have the mind of Christ, you will do it. Why you don't do it? Because you don't have the mind. This morning you are not come here to, to be sent with guilty feeling. This morning you are come here so you can learn from God's word and say to Christ, Lord, I am guilty and I am sorry and I come with to you with a renewed mind. Make me like you. Give me your mind. Let me have the mind of Christ. Amen. Finally, be all of one mind having compassion one of another. Love his brethren. Be painful and courteous. Before you leave, maybe you say, Brother, I'm really wanting these things. I really want to be like Christ. I really want to be like Jesus Christ and have the mind of Christ. Can you give me the secret, brother, to be like Jesus Christ and have the mind of Christ? It is no more a secret, my beloveds. It's a revealed mystery. It's not a secret anymore. But there is a beauty. You can be like Jesus Christ and have the mind of Christ. Are you ready for it? Yes. Come to Philippians chapter 4. One verse. Just one verse. And then we go home. One verse. Look yourself into this verse. Look at yourself in this verse. Picture yourself in this verse. And see the life that you can have year after once you live this world. Having the mind of God. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. The Bible says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are <coughs> true. Amen. You are not called to think whatsoever is false. You are not called by Jesus Christ to think whatsoever is wrong. That's not your business. That's the business of carnal people. That's the business of the wicked people. That's the business of people who want to divide and destroy the house of God. That's the business of the people who want to destroy the body of Christ. That is not your business. <coughs> your business is finally brethren. Whatsoever things are true. A call to think that which is true and linger upon that which is true. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Amen. Not dishonest. Not doubts. Not, not suspiciousness. But honest. Honesty. Sincerity. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. 
lies, not wickedness, but just righteous. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Amen. Why? So you can have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. You're wasting your time by thinking anything opposite to these things. You're destroying your spiritual life by thinking anything that's opposite to this verse. You can become like Jesus Christ and have the mind of Christ. If you think whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, that can bless you in your spiritual growth. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Then what happens if you think on these things? If you think on these things, the Bible says, those things, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, you don't have to turn to God. <clears throat> it says, and the, what is it? The peace of Christ. Okay. The Bible says, oh, be careful for nothing. Verse number 6. Philippians chapter 4, sorry. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. What happens? When you think on these things, and the peace of God, and the mind of Christ, the peace of God. You see, peace of God. Everybody say, in the peace of God. Peace of God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Amen? Amen. How many of you think you are blessed this morning with the message? Anybody here? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The beauty of having the mind of Christ. Go home with the mind of Christ. Do your business with the mind of Christ. You will always be a blessed Christian. Amen. Shall we pray?